Hello and welcome to part two of this Python tutorial where I'm showing you how to use Python to create PowerPoint presentations. In the last part, we ended up with something like this where we had created our file and then we had also put in a slide. In this case, it's a title slide and we had put in a title called Analyst Rising and a subtitle here. Now in part two, I'll be showing you how to go from this with one slide to this with three slides. And in the second slide, we'll be adding a bullet point layout and we'll be putting bullet points with different levels as well as a title. And in the third slide, we'll be adding a picture also with a title and I'll be showing you how to put the picture in. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is quit this file and I'll just minimize that actually and then delete this second PowerPoint presentation that I created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it as a new one so we can go from before and after sort of view. And then the first thing I'm going to do after I zoomed in is to save it as a different file name. In this case I've done pr1.save and similar as before, analyst rising underscore ppt underscore tutorial. But this time I've added underscore part two dot pptx. So it'll be saved in the same place, but as a different file name. So I can give you a before and after. Okay. So moving on to creating our slide two. So how we do that firstly is we need to register it. What I've done is I've created a variable called slide two underscore register. And I've e equated that put equals and I've typed in PR1. Remember, we're calling our presentation PR1. Dot slide underscore layout. And unlike before, where we had zero, which was our title slide, this time we're going to have one, which is our title slide and our layout. And then the next thing we need to do is actually add it to our presentation. So in this case, we've just created it. And now our second line here will be to add it. And we do that by typing in pr1.slides.add slide, add underscore slide, similar to before. And then in brackets, we type in slide to underscore register. And I've given that the variable slide to. Cool. So in that case, we've created our second slide. So if I run it, remember we've saved it as a new PowerPoint presentation. So if I open this new PowerPoint presentation, you'll see here that we've created our second slide with the second layout. With a title, we can add and bullet points. But remember, we're not touching anything in the PowerPoint presentation itself. We're only going to be using Python. So the next thing we need to do is use Python to add a title and some bullet points. And we can do this by, first let's add a title. Similar to before, create a variable title, in this case two rather than one. You don't want to get them confused. We had one for our first slide and we're going to have two for our second slide. Equals slide two, calling our second slide that we've just created and added, dot shapes dot title. And we're going to add a text to that title by simply calling our variable title2 and typing in dot text. And then I've put equals and then the other side of the equals in quotation marks, you can put whatever title you want. In this case, I've put now for some bullet points because that is what we're going to be doing next. So if I just run that again, and then we can see the title that's been added. Here we have our title now for some bullet points in our second slide. So this is the first slide we had, the second slide. At the moment, it's been very similar to what we did in the first part. Now is where it gets a bit different. So in order to add some bullet points, we need to create the box, we need to register the box where the bullet points go into. And we can do that by calling a function called shapes. 
So if we type in slide two, calling our slide two, and type in dot shapes, and then if we put equals and give that the variable bullet underscore point underscore box, that'll create a nice box shape for us to put our bullet points into. I've tried to give the variable names an easy name for you to understand. So hopefully this will make it very easy for you to follow. The first thing we need to do then is create our first bullet point. And in this case, I've typed in, I've called the bullet point box, which is the shape where all the bullet points will go into at different levels. And I've typed in dot placeholder, placeholders one. Now I had a lot of problem when I first created this code and I was going through it and I had problems and it turns out that I had missed, missed out the S. So I was going through trying to find a lost S. So be wary of that because that's a problem I genuinely had. And so once you've typed in bullet point, once you've called bullet point box and typed in dot placeholders one, calling our second placeholder in the slide, we can now add some text to it. And to create text on the first level, all you need to do is type in bullet points underscore level one, calling that second, that bullet point box where which is the second part of that slide, dot text equals subscribe. And that will put the word subscribe in the first bullet point, in the first level. So if we then run that, and then open the file again, lots of file opening, sorry about that. And then we see here that we have subscribe is in the first level. Now, to create subsequent levels, to go in a bit more every time, we're now going to have to use the, the um, function add underscore paragraph. And we can just put them under each other to create new levels. So the next thing we're going to do is create our next indentation. And that's what I mean by levels, is the indentation. And in this case, I've given it the variable bullet points underscore level two. And then I've equated that to, and how I've got created that is I've called our bullet points level one, and I've typed in dot text underscore frame. Let me zoom out a little bit so I have it all in the same frame here. Dot text underscore frame dot add paragraph. Uh, dot add, so let me just write this with you. So you call your first bullet point type in dot text underscore frame dot add paragraph and then put the brackets in there as well normal brackets and that will create a second level for us to add text into and so how you create our text to go into our second level is we just do the same thing we've done all the time to add text as we type in our variable that we've called above, this time bullet points level two dot text equals, and then you put in some text into some quotation marks. And in this case, we also just need to specify that this bullet points level two is level one. Because this starts at zero, remember, like Python, you start at zero and then you move up. You don't start at one, you start at zero. So this technically is like level zero. And then our in the first indentation, our level two here is level one. And so if you run that again, oh, we had a problem here. Ah, okay, yeah. Now this is the problem. This is one thing I don't like about Visual, about Visual Studio Code is that when you have a problem, it all shuts down. Okay, so notice here that I had forgotten to add level one dot text frame. I had forgotten to add the dot. So let me just add that and then run it again. And then we can go to our Python PowerPoint presentation, part two again. We can see here that we have two as our second level. So subscribe to. 
Now you can probably see where this is going when I add other levels, but um, and hopefully you get the message. Hint, hint. But we will continue. So we're going to add two more levels, and then we're going to see what we have finished as that slide. So we're going to do exactly the same as one before. Now we've got an error in the one before, so I will. Uh, add this, do the second one with you. So I had level two here before. This is similar to the level we had above. And I just want to make it a bit clearer. So we're going to call this level three instead. And we have bullet underscore points level three equals bullet points level one, calling our level one not our level two. So everything will fit into our level one bullet point. That's how we add our different levels. And this add paragraph function will go below the next level in as to one above. So this will go indentation further to the below number two. So if we type in bullet points level one, calling our first bullet point dot text frame remember to add the dot otherwise you'll get the error message we had before dot add a paragraph and here we can just remember to change this to level three i need to change this to level three as well same thing adding text in this case it's my and then the level equals two then we can run that again and then go into the file again we have subscribe to my. Then we're going to have one more level, which I'm just going to run through now very quickly. So same thing, bullet points level four this time. Bullet calling in our bullet points level one because it's all going to fit under that first bullet point. Dot text frame dot add paragraph. In this case, the text will be channel with exclamation mark channel and then level equals three run it again open the file again and that will be our second slide completed cool the next thing we're going to do now is add our third slide with a picture cool so with pictures what we're going to have to do is go up to the top we're going to have to import a subsection of the PPTX module called util. And we're going to, so we're going to type in from pptx.util, U-T-I-L. We're going to import something called inches. Now inches helps with the layout of the picture and to position it wherever you want in the slide. And so that will come in very handy when we actually add our image. But the first thing we need to do is create our slide and add it to our presentation. Similar to what we've done twice before already. So we type in pr1.slide underscore layout. In this case, we've got five because it's a very good one for pictures. But it just has the title and then an empty space below it. And then we're going to add that slide to our pr1 presentation, which is our initial presentation up here. PR1 is our presentation. And we're going to type in pr1.slides.add underscore slide and then in brackets type in slide 3 underscore register which is our created slide 3. And so if we run that we will see that we've created a third slide with a different layout to the other ones that we had. So every time we're using a different layout. In this case, we've just got a title box and some empty space below it. The next thing we need to do is add some text. So same thing, title three this time, just to make sure you don't get confused with different titles, equals slide three dot shapes dot title. And then you add some text, title three dot text equals and in this case picture time with exclamation mark so adding text to a title 
it's exactly the same thing that we've done as to slide two and slide one. So let's add that then, let's run it and see our text title. We have here picture time. So the next thing we need to do is use our inches to import our picture and place it very nicely, ideally right below the text. Cool. So how we do that? First things first is we need an image. And the first thing you need to do is find an image and you need to put it into where your Python shell is reading from. Or you need to use the OS module to change your working directory to call that image. And the next thing after that, so in this case, let me actually show you the image that I have. We have this image here. This is from my trailer. This is the image you will see when if you're a new person to my channel. And this is the trailer thumbnail that I have. And we're going to add that picture into the PowerPoint presentation. First thing we're going to do is create two variables. In this case, one of them is called from underscore left, because what that will do is that will position from the left side, however many inches in. And then the next one I'm going to do is create a variable called from underscore top. In that case, that will position from the top of the slide, however many inches in. So after you've imported your image, using the name of the image, including the extension, put into quotation marks, and then given that a variable, in this case, image one, you need to create two variables, in this case, from left and from top, which helps with the positioning. And then the next thing we need to do is add the picture. So we're gonna put our image one variable, which is our image, our from left and our from top function all together in this one line to add the picture and place it into our slide. And how we do that is if we call our slide three and type in dot shapes dot add underscore picture in this time, not paragraph. And then in the brackets, we type in our variable we've called for the image, image one, and then comma from left, in this case, calling our from left, positioning it from the left side of the slide, and then from top, which positions, it, positions the picture from the top of the slide. And in this case, our from left equals inches three. So we're gonna position it three inches from the left and from top equals inches two which puts it two inches down from the top of the slide. And so if we run that, we will see our image that has been added. Oh, let me first open the file. We will see an image that has been added. Ta-da! We have picture time with our title and our image that has been added below it, positioned, is it three inches from the top? Three inches from the left and two inches from the top, giving it, making it, positioning it very nicely right in the center. And I'm just gonna show you if you wanted to move the image around, how you, how you could do that. And so let me just position it a bit lower in the slide. So let's say we wanted it three, we could just change this number here and we can position it more you know, lower down in the slide and we can run it. And if we call it and then open it, notice that it's moved to slightly lower. And they can do the same thing by messing around with these two numbers here. You can position it wherever you want in the slide. So I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. In the next tutorial in part three, I will be showing you how to add auto shapes, auto shapes. And then in part four, or maybe also in part three, I'll be showing you how to add 
hyperlinks as well. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Please do subscribe if you feel like it's been really helpful. Please do also share it to someone who you may feel who you feel may benefit from this. And I hope to see you again in part three of this tutorial. And I hope you've watched the other videos I have as well. Thank you very much for watching.